Wayne, what are you doing? I'm cutting up teasel root. And what are you do what are you making? We're extracting whatever's in teasel root with alcohol. And how much alcohol do you put well, in Well, I'm jar? trying to put a, put a third of it, and mine usually come out, and you can look at you can take a picture of my jar in the other room, and you can look at it's about one to three. I'm sure we're probably going to fill this glass with what I got here. I got a bunch more plants out there, which Cindy's going to get to. And so how old are the teasel plants that you're harvesting? This, this is a, the first year growth. Okay. Um, basically, you could put seeds in in the spring, and this is what you get in the fall. Uh, what it does the following year is produces um, uh, uh, flower shoots to produce seeds. And by they drop them sometimes in early fall. I got a close to a thousand plants coming up my area. I had a whole garden full of these. So I cut them into a little bit smaller pieces when we're working with this. All right. this uh, we, may, we, may, we may make a whole quart in this, but you see what you do. You just, you know, you get yourself an old cutting board or something. Now these little pieces of roots like this, you know, not a lot of magic here either. Look, like little tiny ones, just keep dropping stuff right. in. Uh, you know, look, there's nothing I can say. Not a lot of magic here. And I have this set up right now to go up to about 24 ounces. Mm -hmm. And say so I got some more at home if we need them. And this, 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 so you, you just fill it up with the root up to the top? And I'll then... fill it I'll fill it up. Yeah, why not? I'll fill it up to the 24 level of this because that's a third. Okay. Um, I, not, I didn't really know. A lot of people are 1 to 3, 1 to 5 or some stuff. Um, this is for me, it's always worked out to a 1 to 3. The people say you cut it, you put it in alcohol, and as I've measured it, that's what I've come to do with mine. Now, what size um, mason jar are you using? Uh, the mine in the out of the room is a, uh, it's a pint jar. This is a quart. But I'm sure we're going to have, if not, well, it's, go it's going to be pretty darn close. But it doesn't thing. matter. You can, any, whatever size you use, a third full of vodka, yeah. potato vodka, preferably. Yeah. And it's one, and then if, the, if it's a third, then you, you know, you got a lot of little roots like this. Yeah, okay, well, if you want, I just, you know, wad it up and drop it in. And then how long do you let it sit for? <laughs> one month. Some people say six, six weeks. I've always kept mine at least six weeks. And do you shake it on a daily basis? Uh, I, if I could daily, but I'm not, I'm usually busy. And I'll show you how I set this up. This one was done two or three weeks ago. You notice the top oh. has a date on it. Yep. Here's some of the sizes. Wow. And what I do is that if I remember every day. Or when I go to the pantry, mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, if there's any still silt left, which there really isn't much, we wash it about as much as this. You know, you can decant this out, put something in. You know, it's it's pretty darn clear because I'm shaking it. It's going to be almost as clear as the vodka. Now, what do you, now what is the teasel tincture used for? A lot of people use it uh, for different extraneous viruses, particularly things like Lyme that get into the body. There's other things too. People use it for regeneration. Um, you can read a lot about teasel, but teasel is basically teasel, Japanese knotweed. It grows very well around here. And both are, both are used in um, tinctures for Lyme in particular. Uh, it's a free radical grabber. The Japanese knotweed gives you this beautiful yellow color. It changes your cutting boards to yellow, and that's the, um, I'm going to name it in a minute, but that's the material you extract out of it. And basically, you just start cutting away. It's the easiest yeah. plant in the world to grow. These grew, you, we'll get a picture in a minute, I'll show you. The, for some reason, the ones growing in the rain garden this year didn't grow well, but it was a very dry, horrible year up here for growing anything. The stuff that grew in, I, in, in, my, in all my flower beds is surrounded by cinder blocks. We'll get a picture of that in the middle. And some of them started on their own. Right. Those are these... Roots that look like this, they grew beautiful. Yeah. And here's the ones that grew in the middle of the garden. There may not be much we want in there, there may be. And so why is it that you don't want to use, you only want to use a year old plant or a new plant? Well, the, basically the roots have stopped producing. The following year they produce flowers and they use their energy up. Maybe one okay. of us can do the cutting. Yeah, and they all send this big, the huge yeah. stock up. They're oh. just gorgeous. Honeybees, pollinators. Oh, great. Unbelievable how well they like it. Right. So it's a fun plant. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, it's great so for bees. Yeah, you yeah, we love teasel. It's, it's just a great plant. It has many, many benefits. Well, once again, if there's a little gravel right. left, you don't care, you know, pull those off, yank them off. All right, so what I'll do first is pull yeah. this stuff off. Okay, and then sure. I'll cut this. Cut it. The little, if the little roots go in, look at this. There's little roots mixed into yeah. that. Oh, Probably yeah. better with the chunks, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. That's all I do. Like that. Thank you, Wayne. You That's date, date, date. The other thing I want people to know is you should be checking there's no other roots growing in this from any other plants. There are some poisonous type ones around. Right. Um, but it's easy to tell. So when you're pulling it out, you make sure the roots are pulled out and that type of thing. 
These here are particularly clean. That's why I brought them over. You know, we can look, we'll get a picture of what they look like in the cinder blocks. The thing is, the cinder blocks, those all started on their own. I didn't even plant them. I'm starting to plant the cinder blocks right now. You know, I'll put those back in the house in a few weeks. And you can do it from seed to spring if you want. As I told somebody, I probably have a million seeds in my house right now. Because I put the, all the burrs on the top, hit them with a two by four, and all I see is this so white that, movement at the bottom. So anybody that wants seeds, oh. we can contact you? Yeah, we can start them <laughs> in planters. It's the easiest, <laughs> easiest plant in the world to grow. Yeah, yeah, you can check out. Yeah, yeah, you can see what you're doing. Thank you. Good. These grew by accident in yep. the cinder blocks? Yeah, this, this one grew up the year before. Look at that. So this is a two year thing now. It <laughs> drops seeds, and these are seeds from the spring. Wow. And you can see the roots come all the way out the bottom. And you just saw some in there. Right. So the big ones, the ones that grew in the main garden didn't do as well. So they're actually easier to extract and you know when you yeah, have them in these blocks. It's a lot easier to as maintain long, too. As long as it's not frozen. <laughs> Well, <laughs> even that guy, the people frozen when I dug with that. When people call you, they figure they okay, they're not going to do anything, and they call. You. We want them this morning, and you go, oh, good, that was our first 20 degree night, and it's still 27 out here, and my hoses are frozen. Right. Don't clean them up, so you don't want, don't get as much dirt in your sink. You know, if you get a little gravel in there, so what? It's going to sink to the bottom. Right. Extra minerals. I uh, yeah, I'm not even sure you dissolve it that much, but anyways. All right. Well, here it is. Magic healer. Well, it's an Diesel. interesting plant. It's very easy to grow. It really produces a huge, huge amount of flowers that the honeybees and pollinators just enjoy. And then they drop seeds all over the place. <laughs> I, remember I, seeing, only... I remember seeing the hummingbirds go crazy. Hummingbirds are on it all the time. <laughs> Bumblebees. I think I've counted 12 different pollinators on it and, and such. It's, it's, just, it's just so easy to grow. I mean, it's mm. just there's no work. Just, just, you know, in some areas, well, probably, you know, I gave a lot of plants to people who flowered and dropped seeds all over their yard. So I think a lot of people are going to have teasel for a while. <laughs>